Good afternoon. Um, my name is Giselle Vera, and first and foremost, I wanted to apologize in advance just in case you hear cars. I know there's one coming right now, but I live on a pretty busy street, so yeah. My name is Giselle Vera. Um, I'm taking an Old Testament introduction class, and this week we were encouraged or assigned to create two vlog um, videos. I've never done these before. I don't really know what they are, but yeah, two vlog videos. First one is this one, part one of two parts, and it's going to be talking about two most interesting things I found in the Old Testament. So there are a couple of themes in the Old Testament. There's the covenant, the, the theme of covenants, creation, God's sovereignty, the greatness of Yahweh, um, kingship, and idolatry. And so the two that I chose was um, covenants and the greatness of Yahweh. And so in terms of covenants, I, I decided to choose this one because, and I thought it was most interesting, just because I think I found it so, um, I was just in awe at how the creator of the entire universe would make these promises and these pacts with us um, who aren't worthy of them and don't really deserve them. But um, that just shows how good of a God he is. And essentially what these covenants are is they're just reconciling us back to God. And so I know that we, we know that we lost that in Genesis um, with the introduction of sin through Adam and Eve. We lost that perfect, um, just living in that perfection that God created us to live in with him. That perfect design that God created us to live in with him was lost with the introduction of sin. And so, um, so he created these covenants throughout the Old Testament. And so for, um, with these covenants, there's, there's specific ones. So there's the Adamic one. There's the Noahic, there's the um, Abrahamic, Mosaic, and Davidic covenant. And so with the Adamic covenant, essentially what it was is just, um, it was a promise. Well, I'll read scripture first and then I can explain it after. But it's found in Genesis 1, 26 through 28. And it says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, over the livestock, over the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So this covenant, this promise, was that we would have the authority through through God, the, the divine authority, to be watchmen, to be caretakers, um, to have this dominion over every single thing in creation, everything that God created. It's a big responsibility. Big responsibility. Um, and so the next covenant is the Noahic covenant. So this pertains to Noah, this pertains to the flood, um, God saw that the earth was, his creation was, was plagued by sin and completely evil, um, the Bible talks about the Nephilim, I know that's very controversial, but that, um, angels were having, um, children with human women, and so it was creating these half-breed abominations i know that the bible said it and i in specific scripture so um i know that to be true but i know it's pretty controversial but regardless um god found favor in noah because noah was walking in closeness with god and so god told noah take you your family and two of every single animal and get on that ark that you're about to build because um i'm gonna have to flood the entire earth and so that's exactly what he did. Um, and when all was said and done, the waters receded, Noah found land. God made a promissory covenant to Noah. A promissory covenant is just 
it's it's not conditional it's not based on certain things that you have to do it was God saying hey I promise this to you um, there's nothing that you can do you just you, you have to accept it like I this is my promise to you and, and to us and so God promised that he would never flood the earth again and he as a symbol as a seal of that covenant God created the rainbow and so scripture supporting scripture for this can be found in Genesis 9 8 through 12 and it says then God said to Noah and his sons with him behold I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you with every living creature that is with you the birds the livestock every beast of the earth with you as many as came out of the ark it is for every beast of the earth I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth so Genesis 9 9.13 says, I have set my bow in the cloud, and, I sh and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Meaning the rainbow. Next covenant is the Abrahamic covenant. So this covenant is, I think, one of the most, com well, one of the most discussed covenants, I think, that when we have uh, biblical classes or biblical conversations, we know what the Abrahamic covenant is. And the Abrahamic covenant is promises that God made to Abraham of land, blessing, um, offspring, seed. And so this can be found in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, these promises that God made to Abraham. And so we see the f the beginning of the fulfillment of these covenants. I think they're, they're, continu we, they're obviously like continuous throughout the Old Testament, but um, with Canaan. And so land, the, f the fulfillment of God bringing these people out of Egypt through... Um, so the exodus out of Egypt into what he was going to promise them, the promised land, which was Canaan. And um, they disobeyed people because we're people. We fall short all the time. Um, and so they were stuck in the wilderness for 40 years. But there was the fulfillment. The fulfillment. God fulfilled his, his promise of being them being in the promised land. Even if it wasn't going to be that first generation of people who were taken and saved out of Egypt, it was, God said it was going to be the next generation that will see that promise fulfilled, but God fulfilled that promise. And um, this was, and then in addition to that, um, there was the promise of offspring. So it, not only just Abraham's offspring, but it was, I think it was so beautiful. I know we're not talking about Jesus yet because he's not... Uh, he was with God in the beginning, and yeah, but he when he wasn't um, in human. He wasn't incarnate yet. He wasn't. He wasn't here on the earth. You know what I mean? But anyways, um, I say all that because Abraham wasn't. It was not only his offspring, his physical bloodline offspring. It was when Jesus came through the lineage of Abraham, through the line of David that he, through his um, atonement for our sins, that we were to be saved and that we could be grafted into that lineage, that divine lineage, that God, God, God's lineage. And so we would be grafted into that family. And so it's not only just this bloodline of Abraham, now it's just all these adopted, grafted in. So, so really it is descendants as numerous as the stars. And I thought that was beautiful. And so the Mosaic Covenant was established in Mount Sinai, in the book of Exodus. God wrote the Ten Commandments and uh, gave them to Moses. And these Ten Commandments were just as relevant back then as they are now. Um, first four being anti-idolatrous covenants. Things like you should never... Um, Pray to another God besides me. You need to keep the Sabbath day in remembrance. Um, never use my name in vain. Excuse me. And so they abide. We need. We are expected to abide by them just as much today as we did back then. And so the next covenant is the Davidic covenant. And so the Davidic covenant refers to God's promises to King David through Nathan the prophet um, this can be found in 2 Samuel 7, and it can be summarized later in 1 Chronicles and 2 Chronicles. But it's 
an unconditional covenant made between God and David that God essentially promises that through the line of David, there will be the Messiah. And we know that through the line of David, the Bible says through the line of David, that Jesus came and who's Jesus? The Messiah. We know him, believe in him as the Messiah um, wholeheartedly. And so those were a summarization of all of the major covenants within the Old Testament. Um, so now the greatness of Yahweh. So I think all of those covenants kind of are perfect examples of the greatness of Yahweh. But um, just to provide more scripture, I know that our lecture for, I leaned a lot on lecture for, um, to, for information and just, just knowledge pertaining specifically to this subject. Um, I don't know who you are, professor, because I know that it's a different professor than our professor right now, but um, I, sorry, sorry, my door was open. Um, but I thank you for helping us out a lot. So um, I got a lot of that, a lot of my knowledge from lecture four, but lecture four talks about Jeremiah 10, 6, 1 Chronicles 16, 25, Nehemiah 1, 5 through 6, 1 Samuel 12 through 22. These are just some scriptures that we can refer to. I'm so sorry about that. I don't know why this always happens when I'm trying to record a video. But um, with all that being said, the greatness of Yahweh, that's what we were talking about. So God is so incredibly good in that he gives us these covenants, these promises, and he knows that we're not going to be able to keep them. Like, we're not going to be perfect in keeping them all the time. He knows that we're going to fail. We're going to fall short. And yet, and yet, even through that, despite knowing that, he still keeps his promises and he still fulfills that those, those promises towards perfect reconciliation with the Father. And I think that's so beautiful. And that is, if nothing else, the perfect example of the greatness of, of Yahweh and who he is and his heart and his character. But I was thinking of examples and I was thinking of Joseph in Egypt and um, Nebuchadnezzar, the, the, the three men who were thrown into the furnace and God showed his greatness then. They were not burned. They did not smell a fire. They weren't um, singed in any way. God protected them. He sent an angel to protect them and be with them in that fire. There was another in the fire. You know the song? Um, that's biblical. And so God continuously shows his greatness. But specifically, I was thinking about Joshua. And I was thinking about when... I'll just read it. In Joshua 10, Joshua's coming to the aid of, Gib of Gibeon. A city that had five kings coming against it. Five kings, five kingdoms coming against this specific city. And Joshua and his army marched all night to reach this specific place. So in verse 8, God said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. I've given them into your hand. He's promising him this. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. So God goes on to throw the enemy into confusion by literally hurling down these hailstones from heaven. The Bible tells us that the enemy died, a lot of the enemy died by those hailstones, um, more than by, this, by, by actual battle, by sword. God fulfilled his promise to help Joshua. And then we see in Joshua that, which has never happened before and never happened since, that Joshua prayed this, Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and you, moon, over the valley of Aijalon. And so he prayed that. He prayed for sunlight to be extended, for sunlight, to, basically the sun to stop and the moon to stop where it was, and for them to have more time. And that's exactly what happened. God allowed the sun to stop and the moon to stop so that Joshua could, and he could fulfill his promise to Joshua, and that Joshua would be able to conquer and overcome all these kingdoms. And it happened. It happened that day literally the sun and the moon stopped and it never happened since then and it never happened before then just just a multitude of examples of of god's greatness um but those were the most too interesting to me and the most 
I wouldn't say important, but they drew my attention the most. And, um, yeah, so I don't really know how to finish part one video, but this was part one. And I will be posting part two next, because that's how the order goes. Um, and so, yeah, I thank you so much for listening to me in um, my little rambles and my rants. And uh, have a blessed night. Thank you.